Good. What up, everybody, and welcome to the FB and Goop Show. I am FB. And I'm the Goop. Sponsored by the Good Time Tavern of Livermore, California. How's the Goop? The Goob has fallen into a deep state of depression. My really? summer. I mean, soccer. it wasn't that big of a fucking deal. My summer I mean, of soccer is over. <laughs> oh, oh! I thought you were talking about the attempted assassination of the great beloved forty-five. Oh yes, no. Um, I I heard something about that. Uh, not exactly sure what to think. I mean, half me thinks that somebody missed, and the other half thinks that who knows what the fuck's going on here. <laughs> After you big, think big mama's that house all over again. somebody I missed i have a hard time <laughs> living in america thinking that somebody can take the life of another person because he doesn't agree with his thoughts plans ideas so in that aspect i like to still try to be an american <laughs> did he <laughs> did he miss i mean if you don't like donald trump he missed <laughs> I, I guess but I look at it as this, and this is how I looked at it. And this might sound weird, but I looked at it as like the one of the greatest backfires in the history of backfires. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Like this kid. Go give me that poster with the blood on his face and the, the fist pumping in the air. All the Secret <laughs> Service guys around. You missed him. me, bitch poster. Miss me, USA. bitch. USA. USA. <laughs> USA. But I. That's and that's why I say greatest backfire of all time because that young disturbed, which I would like to thank him for not going into a school and shooting eight year olds, because most disturbed twenty year old who look like they pubescently were beaten to death most of the time, who are just don't seem to be right in the head, have usually in the last twenty some odd years gone into a school and shot eight year olds. Thank you for not doing that. Right. Hopefully this is setting a new precedent. Less, I'm setting less a new cool. precedent. I'm not going into schools and shooting kids, but shooting congressmen and politicians because hey, maybe that's somebody. who you should shoot. <laughs> Don't shoot no more kids, please. That's all I'm asking. Um, but to think that he had such a great idea in his own little personal mind and he got the ladder and cops were chasing <laughs> him and he got on the roof and people were pointing him out. Hey, there's a guy in a river again, you know, and 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 Don's still on the stage and nobody can figure out why Don's still on the stage because there's a guy with a gun and cops are chasing him, but they're on parking duty. <laughs> they're just chasing some guy with like, a gun. Not my job, dude. Not my job. Not my job, man. All right. So you know, I'm confused why there wasn't a middleman. Hey, what's going on? We're chasing the guy with a gun. Hold on, let me get over secret server so fast. Hey guys, we got a gun. You know, I don't, I'm confused, but that's not my point of this story. My point is based on the greatest backfire in the history of this guy's life. Because <laughs> all he ended up doing was making the person he was going to assassinate the 47th president. It's like it comes the United from fighting States. master heroes. <laughs> yeah. The USA. USA. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. He's created a monster, man. He's he created, created a, monster. a monster and died. <laughs> what up? I mean, died. his... If, if his plan would, and, I, and then I think about if his plan would have came to fruition and he pulled it off, the sniper he was, um, <laughs> what would have been the outcome of that? Because you would have, like, killed the Lord Savior of half the country. <laughs> We're completely divided. 75 million over there. Nice. 75 million <laughs> the over here. Confederacy here. rises again. Confederacy. <laughs> I mean, right? Why not? I mean, they've got more guns than most of us. Yeah, I, I don't have any. <laughs> you don't have any. I got one. I don't think I'm going to help because I think I'm walking right over to the other side. I'm like, <laughs> hey, guys, what are you doing? You got a gun? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we got another one with a gun hell yeah billy bob <laughs> i don't know what to tell you because i don't think i want to be the only guy on the one side with the gun do you guys don't got guns <laughs> oh, i'm going to the other side i'm sorry yeah, yes. <laughs> i don't know what to tell you i i just i mean it's just insane and at the yeah. same time we got sports to talk about this that's is right show. so but i i you know, we'll see how the show ends. Just, just uh, listen, wow. just wow. <laughs> yeah. And listen, when when in doubt, Caitlin Clark. Hey, Caitlin Clark, baby. That's what I always say. And the hits just keep coming. Come on now. First NBA rookie to 400 points, 150 assists, and 100 rebounds, leading the WNBA in assists in her rookie year. 
and 14th in points, oh, fifth yeah. in threes. I mean, <laughs> we've changed our mind. She's now rookie of the year. Yeah, I think now, now that we've seen Angel Reese, uh, her streak come to an end and watch her shoot free throws, I think we're uh, we're convinced that Caitlin might be the better player here. She might be the better rookie. I think what she's doing all the way around, and I'm not – She's riding the glory of the NCA points thing and, you know, Ice Cube offering her money and Nike offering her money. And, you know, that's a whole different. That's not what we talk about. We talk about 400 points, 150 assists, 100 rebounds. Yeah. It's leading uh, first, the uh, what, last place uh, fever now in the playoffs. Now in the playoffs. And, and it just quick, took everybody to believe around. in her. Score right. some points. That's why she's number one in assists. You know what I mean? Because they're they believe in her. They get the ball. They score. They go down there. They yeah, know when they give the ball to her. Too. She's had some dimes, as they say. Yes. Now we do know that she is, and this is her downfall. What is she? Well, how many turnovers a game? Five point five and a half turnovers a game probably leads the WNBA by a well, I'd say a large margin. I couldn't find the stat anywhere. Come on, ESPN, get your shit together. Right. Thanks for no help there, ESPN. Yeah. No. Um. <laughs> Uh, five, five and a half steals. You can work on that, but listen, if you pass the ball like that, you go, you go pass it to the wrong person every once in a while. <laughs> uh, not only that, she had the greatest, uh, single game as a, uh, NBA rookie with 25 points. So, I mean, it was like insane. Five steals, five blocks, 10 rebounds, you know, almost, a, you know, 10 assists, seven rebounds, something insane. Nobody else has ever done that. So. When in doubt, Kaylin Clark. It's killer Caitlin, man. He can't... Killer Clayton, right? There we go. Not talking about her anymore. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, I know. It's hard. Uh, so, but listen, there is some men things going on. We got we some summer some... league. Hey, listen, we have summer league action. And I, I listen, I have to talk about this because uh, leading the way in the summer league is uh, the is the guy I thought who was the ball boy. Oh, <laughs> uh, don't even say it. The ball boy's killing it. Yeah, the ball boy's killing it in summer league. So oh, Reed Shepard for for Houston is like 22 and a half, six assists, five rebounds, three steals. The kid's just playing ball. And I right. still go on the fact when I saw him go in the court, I thought it was charity for some other reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who's this guy? This must be some charity thing. Why'd they take Edwards off the court? Come on, put the Edwards guy back on the court. You know what I mean? Oh, he, Edwards didn't start. Reed started. <laughs> Well, should have saw the beginning of the game. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, apparently the kid's good, man. Apparently I was wrong. We saw it all through this last year in college um, oh, that yeah. he was much better than I thought he was. <laughs> and going the whole way up to number three, the draft pick number three, I thought that was uh, – I thought maybe that was a reach. For I did size. too. I was thinking you guys taking that guy instead of Jordan or whatever. Whatever whatever you did, Darko Milicek, I was like, oh, no, it's yeah, a Darko yeah. moment right here. <laughs> going on here no it was uh i think he's played well there's uh been a few kids playing well out there uh the pistons guy at ron holland at number five he's uh he's all over the place man he's got one of those non-stop motors for the motor city so i like that well it's good <laughs> for you guys to grab somebody that you're happy with in the beginning of his because that lately it's been damn this guy he still sucks. can't shoot he still can't, can't shoot, shoot but <laughs> hey is he can he defend he does like defending that's big. Uh, yeah. I'm also happy to hear um, or to see. Uh, and I, so I told you at 24, 25, please take him. But that Terrence Shannon kid out of Illinois, uh, after uh, all the yeah, allegations the and after all the stupid shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's like 19 points or something like that. I mean, it's like good for you, pal. I And yeah. being, you know, he was, he was 27th or what was he taking? Yeah, he was, you know, 27th pick, I believe. So he could yeah. have been. And it, was he a lottery pick? He might be a re-signed five years from now, Max Deal kid. That's what he might be. So, yeah. yeah. No, no. So, Certainly, it's been pretty fun. It's good to see all the the big, tall white guys get some uh, some play. So that's it's been interesting. Hey, I mean, Even Zach, if... Zach, they got Zach Eady as a top ten kid here in the summer league this year. Oh yeah, right now his rookie, his rookie of the year uh, prop bet went like through the roof. He's like the favorite now or something. Really. Which... I, I don't believe that because I would not put my money on him. Just no, so everyone knows. no PSA. Don't put your money on that guy. That would be a mistake. Cause when he gets into the pros, he's Embiid and everybody else and all these other big guys and the way they defend, and he's going to be much slower and he's not going to be able to guard the three when 
the center goes out and shoots one. <laughs> You're like, oh shit. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm I'm not so excited about yeah, dun, 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 lunky kind of kid, you know. But um uh, Reed Shepard, maybe. I, I I'm not saying anything. I mean, Dylan Hang, hey, Dylan Hand went out, he put up eight points in two minutes. Another little Kentucky ding ding there. But uh, eight Wayne points Jr. in two minutes. That's explosive. That's that's Anthony Edwards. That's you know, SGA. I- you know, explosive we, eight points, two minutes. We haven't had an updated microwave since Vinny Johnson. Like, <laughs> so there we go. And then it get hot quick, right? Yeah. So the small things. Hey, I mean, it's summer league, but we got to talk about something in basketball. I mean, Embiid could be put on the bench in the USA Olympic team, right? And they, uh, well, they're winning comfortably so far. You know, I mean, we do have the best players in the world, but it is fun that they get to open with uh, Djokovic in the uh, first game. And so, uh, and beat on the bench that would put Anthony Davis in the starting role against Yoke. You know what he does against Davis? He kicks his ass all the time. <laughs> kicks his ass all over the <laughs> place all the time. So uh, I don't think he's going to be worried about LeBron James because he kicks his ass all the time too. So <laughs> uh, the Joker is. Uh oh, we might lose the first game of the year because the Joker's against us. God damn it, that's that's fine. Yeah, well, I mean, if, if we have a weakness, it's uh, you know, playing defense and paint probably. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, well. I, if we have a weakness. If, yeah, well. But if Embiid tries, then that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> if Embiid just, I don't think Embiid just need. I think Embiid's just rusty. He just got off being injured, trying to play in the playoffs. And right. he's like seven foot four. He's a big guy. He's just, he warmed <laughs> he up. To, he needs to loosen up first. Totally. Bigger circles, bigger circles. You know what I mean? So I get it. I understand where he's coming from. Uh, Kawhi Leonard gone. He's gone. gone. Is he gone? He just yeah, I think so. Out. Clippers were unhappy about it or something. I don't know. I didn't even. Yeah, read I didn't article. get it. It's like, <laughs> like why well, are you unhappy? You get to take a day off now. <laughs> yeah, he's coming back. He's gonna rest. He's gonna be ready to play for you and not exhausted from being in the Olympics for the little extra time doing all this stupid shit. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm confused, but he did have to practice all that time. He's just gonna miss the Olympics. So I guess hey, it man, is kind of hypey having an Olympic. Uh, an Olympic gold medalist on your team. As I long can as he can sell the jersey, that's all they really care about. <laughs> He's gonna sell the jersey. That's not a problem. He's got that <laughs> ring, remember? <laughs> so, so let's yeah. So uh, go USA basketball. How about USA soccer? Well, I mean, we uh, after our disgraceful bow hey. out at the Cup America. <laughs> hey, quick, quick question. Sorry to interrupt you. Did you, did you lose your next topic sign? Trying to run a professional show here. <laughs> next topic all right so usa soccer what's going on oh yeah well yeah we were a disgrace so we uh fired our coach okay for, for the second time we like to fire bird halter and then just like bring him back later because we couldn't figure anything else out so it will be up to the uh the u.s board to uh i don't know make a splash man there's some managers out there that just got canned over in the premier league there's some uh there's some options I thought Klopp. What is Klopp coming for? Is that just uh, is that just a name they're throwing out there? To- I think he really just likes fireworks. Like he sent out a tweet, "Happy Fourth of July, America," and a picture of some fireworks and shit. And everyone was like, "Oh, Klopp's the new coach. That's it." <laughs> okay. But yeah, Jurgen Jurgen Klopp. Uh, yeah, Jürgen. he retired from he retired from Liverpool, so he's available. Um, there's a couple guys like that. There's a couple Italian coaches that just quit their uh their italian squad teams that so we'll see or they could just go get like tab ramos again and pick some ex, ex player <laughs> yeah because wow. i don't know if some of the italian coaches or mr klopp really wants to slum it like that you know and come playing in right. mary you know what i mean well, yeah. like, it would take like probably most of our budget soccer budget to uh to get one of those big names like klopp over here so that's very unlikely it, it'd be right. it's a fun dream it's a fun dream I'd, we have I'd an accountant in our thing. Now, if you guys want to start sponsoring Marlboro and Crown Royal, sure, let's do this. Right. But if you kind of want to keep doing health water and Gatorade, well, fuck, tell you. No, you're stuck. <laughs> our no our buys, budget's no like this. Stuff. No one buys cleats, man. <laughs> yeah, nobody buys cleats. In Italy, go around Italy. It's Marlboro and Camo and Crown Royal and... That's his, uh, oh, yeah. Don't give a fuck. They raking in the bills. That's right. Hundred dollars. So, I mean, 
So we got that going on with soccer. Uh, both the finals, I believe, happened since our last show. Yes. Um, so England, we get to see sad, sad English fans because despite Cole Palmer's fantastic goal, Spain outplayed them, scored two goals, and uh, then did what they did. They played a little defense at the end. England didn't really have too many chances. Harry Kane sucks. Still no trophy for him. Ha, ha, ha. Well, you know how I feel about the English, so ha, ha, ha. Yeah, so uh, I mean, freedom. good news in the Euros. I thought that was fun. And uh, in Copa America, probably the, I don't know what happened there, but this game was so boring. It's like Argentina didn't want to win. And Colombia was like so exhausted after playing penalties and extra time in the previous three matches that they got there and they're, they had no legs. Colombia had no legs. Was, uh, was Messi got hurt. Is that, I was going to ask you, did Messi get hurt? I thought I saw something like with a big like ankle. Like his yeah yeah <laughs> he twists his ankle on on like a sprinkler or something sprinkler yeah nice <laughs> move by, by nice move by the other team yeah right <laughs> very sneaky very sneaky yeah so Argentina got a goal in the 116th minute from Latoro Martinez beautiful through ball from Giovanni Lo Celso so you know Argentina wins a third straight major soccer competition so and good job Messi you bastard. <laughs> so he's got three now, and he'll just move on now, right? He'll just retire, or can he come back next year and do this again? Well, he's going to just nah, – if he's still playing in two years, I'd be shocked for the World Cup. Right. But uh, he's going to fuck around in Miami for a couple more years, so we'll see. I you know, would maybe say – right. I'd say he stays in shape playing in Miami, no problem. Yeah. So he's maybe, probably making maybe, money. Maybe he makes another run at it. Who knows? I mean – World Cup be fun. Argentina I can probably has better players at this point in time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I would hope so. They've got 19, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23 year olds. Yeah, yeah he doesn't even do You know, <laughs> not taking anything away from him, but there's somebody who's just as talented now, but way faster. Right, and can play a little defense, which yeah, is yeah. nice. That's good yeah. to have when you only have 11 people. <laughs> uh, yeah, you need to play some defense. You're playing defense right now if you want to put up the next topics on there, buddy. Because Chris Busher's playing defense. <laughs> what was he doing this week? It wasn't like he wasn't even trying. <laughs> no, he had the lead for about 30 laps, actually. I was pretty proud of him. But, you know, it was pit strategy shit. And they're in NASCAR, let me teach you a few things about NASCAR. If you want to learn a Please. couple things about NASCAR. Okay. Oh, yeah. If you are doing pit strategy racing and you are getting long green flag laps, Pitch strategy racing is the way to go because you can just kind of keep staying ahead of the other person or pitting ahead of them with fresher tires or getting it to getting yourself where you can go the longest amount of laps in the end with the, with the gas pitch strategy, whatever the fuck you're trying to accomplish and nothing kills pitch strategy more than like 11 fucking cautions in a row. Just like <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everybody's on fucking fresh tires now. <laughs> you got to pit because everybody's pit seven times already. So, and you keep yeah. trying to stay in the lead. But that guy behind you just keeps getting more gas and fresher tires every time. And eventually, son of a bitch going to get you. <laughs> so they just let me pass the uh, pit thing and then they all ducked in behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what? So, so he's out like, oh, man, they all pitted. Fuck. Fuck. Well, he had the lead and then a caution came and some pit strategy happened where and see when you have a race like Pocono where you don't beat up tires at one point in time, you're going to go, just give me two tires and a full tank of gas. And the team's <laughs> going to go, you got it. <laughs> and everybody else is going to get four tires. and They're going to look over and go, hey, why is that guy leaving so fast? He took two tires. He took two tires. All right. Switch it to tires. Two tires. You know? <laughs> so. And that's probably what Busher did at one point in time. He probably did a little sneaky move and he took a two tire move and he would zoop right up to the front. Now I just need green flag for a little while. And I need everybody to get back into se sequence of pits. I know two tires don't matter at Pocono. I'll just drive around. So yeah, no I don't problem. know, but when you get five cautions in a row, it changes everybody's fantastic thing. And the first caution um, the the first caution for busher when he was leading the first caution he got bit by the two tire changers so ah. he was in first came in let's do four because he probably did two before or some shit you know so like four full tank let's go and nine guys got two and all drove by everybody 
And then nine cautions happened in a row. I fell back, man. I was like, you were in first. I was like fifth or sixth. I was like, I'm fine here. Go, whatever. Go get him, Chris. <laughs> go get him, Mr. Bush. Come on, Butcher. Come on, Bush. Go get him. I told you Pocono's the most boring race. If you have the lead, <laughs> you have the lead. <laughs> you just sit there and watch the most boring fucking race in the world. You're just like, yeah. God damn it. I wish this race would rain out right now. <laughs> Only good Pocono race is one that got halfway in the rain started. <laughs> right. That's done. Yay. So no, I, I, honestly, Pocono is one of my hard races. Everybody wants to win it because it's one of the tough races. You can't pass if you have the lead. If you do it right, you win it. And if you win Pocono, you go down in the history of Jeff Gordon winning four or five of these motherfuckers. The other somebody else, Jeremy Mayfield, winning five of them because only so many people could just figure it out and could win it. So if you win right. one, good for you. I think Blaney now has two, so he's getting in that like, hey, you can win a Pocono kind of shit, you know. But you are defense right now. You need a win. Now, I hear you have some busher information for me that will well, help. I, well, I, I just got the schedule the, the next five races. Right. Uh, we got Indianapolis and Michigan and ri- wait, Richmond, then Michigan. Great race. Then, Three great then races Daytona and Darlington. And, and Chris Busher has won. Well, last year alone, he won Michigan, Richmond, and Daytona. Okay. So, familiar with these tracks, looking good. I still think we can get one win. That's all we really need is that one win. I, I believe the points should carry us. I mean, Bubba Wallace could catch us, I guess. We're up by, like, 43 on him, I think. Right. Well, yeah. So, it's going to come down to right there, too. No, Bubba Wallace is out. Go back and look at those points. He... He, he didn't finish this race very well, so I don't think it's Bubba Wallace anymore. I think it's somebody else. Uh, somebody else is behind you. Well, there, yeah, there's four of us in, in so far in the the cup or whatever, and uh, we are third in points. Chris Buescher is, and yeah, I forget who's right behind us, and then it's Bubba Wallace on the outside looking in. Right. And then Kyle Busch, after this week, I think he's done. I think he was looking in. He's going to need a win now. Kyle's going to need to win. He hasn't had a win in 80 racers or something like that. He's going to need to win because I think I think just too many wrecks for Mr. Bush. He can get yeah. good finishes, but he's just had too many like, damn it, I, somebody smashed into me again. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> then I say it's karma. <laughs> oh, my. So, yeah, right. He say bad luck. We say karma. Karma, motherfucker, for all the terrible years of wrecking everybody else or being that prick everybody hated. So it just came back to you in the end. He didn't even, at the end of this race, which was a wreck out, somebody wrecked his ass. Uh, LaJoy, this kid, wrecked him. Uh, a Canadian comedian? Uh, Randy LaJoy. Uh, different guy. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, he, when he walked up to the interview, the lady came out of the like medical tent. They're like, Kyle, what do you think? You think that was screwed up? He's like, I don't know anymore. I'm out of here. Talk to you later. He's walked know, away. See, see you guys later. <laughs> I'm done. Who's the next guy that's got to ask me a question? Because I know this is media circle right now. And he just like, and I think he was just like, I'm done. I, and it's like been a really tough year for me. I just don't give a fuck anymore. When's it over? Man, I don't even want to get a win because I'll have to care for the rest of the year. <laughs> so I just get the fuck out of here. So right. I don't want to get my hopes up anymore. Couple more. Races I'm excited for next week's race. Is Indianapolis right? I believe so. Yeah. So they. It's kind of at Pocono, Indianapolis. That's kind of cool because that that little middle turn at in at Pocono is kind of like what you have to do when you turn at Indianapolis. I think that's why they go Pocono, Indianapolis. Sure. Indianapolis is not an oval; it's a rectangle with two ninety degree circles at the end, <laughs> <laughs> right? In banked. So instead of this like thing, it goes. <laughs> so and then but you got to remember you got to go back the other way so you got to go whoop, real fast back the other way so it's kind of like this really weird ass so i think and the third turn at pocono like pocono big long straightaway normal turn you're used to you see at daytona to a triangle point where you got to make a fucking 90 degree to go back down to the other part of the straight so it's like a crazy yeah. ass kind of track that's it up that's it's up too man it's just obtuse is actually what it is. So Indianapolis kind of that same turning style, but it's every fucking turn is that turning style. You know what I mean? It's not like just one time and then fly through the, you know. And so. it's the home of Caitlin Clark, so who doesn't want to be there? 
Uh, me. I heard it's a really crime ridden city. I, I don't want to be there. I gotta oh, take my kids' sorry. places. Sorry about that, Indianapolis. We walked right into that one. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, listen, you got any performers of this wonderful week in sports? Oh, wait a minute. Are we getting, let's shoot. Teosco Hernandez. We got to say something. Uh, about the, we got to say something. It was so boring and I don't want to talk about it, but I'm like, a Dodger won it for the first time ever in the history of the yeah. whole thing. First Dodger uh, ever. So, so all hail Teosco Hernandez of right. the Los Angeles Dodgers. I hope he gets an extension. I know we gave him a one year deal. I'd like to see three more years. Right. On the team. His, his name is so fun to say, too. It is. And I'm still learning it to just uh, just be able to nail it. You know, I don't think it's that easy to just to turn around and say it in an instant. So uh, it's not like Jordan Love. You know what I mean? Yeah. Brian, I had not to say like, Brian oh, Gutekunst dude. over and over again. You know what I mean? Gutekunst. Hey, Gutekunst. Hernandez. You know what I mean? That's a good one to practice. So congratulations one, yeah. to him. Uh, beat that kid that was he went against that wit from the Royals, that wit junior. His swing. Very unique. Yeah, a lot, quick, a, lot of, wrists. a lot of wrists, a lot of wrists, a lot of snap, a lot of upper body. Not didn't yeah. look smooth. It didn't look like Otani. It didn't look like Bonds when Bonds whole body turned. It looked amazing. You know what I mean? That ball's gone. Yeah, it was all just one thing happening. Like One thing happening. He's just kind of like he gets there and then he swings his wrist real hard. Like, and <laughs> Like that guy that who'd you guys used to have in the outfield for you wore the high socks, you know? Batted could, like he was from the 30s. Who would be a giant, the Giants announcer? Um, Pence? <laughs> yeah. Pence. Good old Pencey. Kinda, if Pence was a home run hitter, I think they would almost, like, that would have been right. what he looked like. <laughs> kind of herky-jerky-ish. Herky-jerky kind of <clears throat> upper body swing, weird face. Right. But when they get it, it goes a long way, my friend. <laughs> crushed it. Yeah, you know what? The Hernandez crushed a lot of them, too. And apparently oh, yeah. the guy from the Braves, Uzana, U- U- Ozana. Arcia. Is it? Oz- yeah, it was either Arcia or Ozuna. That guy probably should have been in the last round, right? That was the big guy. I can hit this 500 yards. Right. He just didn't. But what happened is that that style of, I got to throw 50 pitches at you in two minutes. What? What? I can't do that. And then you get a bonus boring. ball. If you hit one 425 yards, I'll hit it 600 yards. Just don't throw 50 at me in two minutes. Right. That's the rules, bro. I mean, that's why Mookie Betts wins this thing now because he's athletic. <laughs> Go ahead. Throw 50 at me. <laughs> so listen, go Dodger guy. First ever go home run derby sucked. It just took they forever. Do, that first round was like nail biting. It was like, or, right. or, or, or poking shit in my eyeballs. One of the two. I don't know what it was like. <laughs> yeah. Just make this I end. I skipped that when we to the very end where uh, Bobby Witt just missed by like nine feet from tying it up. And right. yeah. A three hour so, show man. for a four foot miss. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. So. Oh, man. I, I no, know, I, I, know I like announced- to say that the baseball all star game is my favorite all star game. It's the only they one. announce the play. starters. We get uh, Corbin. Corbin Burns gets to go against Otani. And then, uh, of course, Paul Skeens for the NL is going against Judge and Soto in the first inning. So that'll be an exciting start. It will be. Yeah. Nice. I, like I, don't know where, I don't know where they're playing Otani. First, third, fourth. I don't know. He'll probably get up in the first inning no matter I what. I thought Otani was the DH. Is there no sure. DH? I just don't know what uh, position in the batting order he is. Oh, I don't either. Uh, I'm no assuming clue. it's one, two, or three. <laughs> right, in that area, right? So, yeah, I, I have no clue. I know he's just DH. That's it for him. He just go, go right. swing the ball, done. So. He probably comes out first. You just throw the best out first, right? Right, just go out there, hit a home run, end it. Yeah. Say, all right, good job. Um, Yeah, performers of the week. You got some, I mean, I got my, I'm excited for my performer of the week, to be honest with you. I really am. So, who you got? Well, I mean, I, I'm going to have to go back to my, to the summer of soccer since I'm just reminiscing so fondly about, about it now. Um, yeah, no, whoever makes England cry. So I'm going to go with Mikel Oryazabal with the game winner to put all the sad faces on the sad English people. I feel like you just went with the hardest name to say. But oh, I, yeah, like you I went mean, it's, it's spelled even harder. If the announcer wouldn't have said it, I wouldn't have I'd been like, what? He wouldn't have been your performer of the week. <laughs> yeah, too many K's and Y's in that name for me to understand. Goodness, that name. 
But yeah, so I got the Spanish uh, center midfielder or forward or whatever position he plays. I got him. Who you got? Um, man, I I think I, I in the history of my life, I think so far, I've never been a part of a team where the person didn't take the most money they could get. Aaron Rodgers, he got all three hundred million every time. And, and you know what I mean? I've never seen. I've never been. A, I've never been a part of a team where the player. Where you going with this? All right. Continue. I've never been part of a team where the player put the franchise, the other players on the team, and the organization becoming a championship organization because somebody needed to do it because they've been in such a bad place for so many years due to the owner being such a horrible human being. We needed one decent human being to show up and, 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 and do something cool, man. And Jalen Brunson leaving $113 million on the table is unheard of in today's age. Um, $113 million. Like, like somebody showed him a table and he said, you can James have Harden, this much. James Harden's quit for a year for less money than that. <laughs> right? So you can have all this money. And it's like he put his hand down the little and he put half over and he said, hey, keep that half and make sure the team's I'll be back better. For this. I'll be back, I'm going to take this half. <laughs> I will get this money. I ain't worried about it. His oh, endorsements alone probably blew up the next day. They were right. probably doing T-Mobile commercials in a week about this guy saving the world by giving his phone to somebody. I don't know, but something's going to happen for him. He's cool. He's not worried about it. It's Jalen versus the volcano. To leave that money on the table to allow us to go for somebody next year if we want. Because it's done now. We're not worried about anybody, but we got $37.8 million to max somebody next year if needed. So. So uh yeah, former of the week, Mr. Brunson, Mr. Jalen Brunson of the New York Knicks. I I believe that is worth a clap. I agree. Because uh it, it's not it doesn't happen often. Never. Tom Never. Brady, Jeter, uh Mother Teresa Calcutta. I feel like Jeter might have done it a little bit, but not to this extent. Not to this extent, no. But I believe Jeter probably put a little, left a little money. I know Brady took smaller contracts and did things to make sure that, I don't know, I guess he could cheat or something. <laughs> yeah, so he could deflate footballs. So he could deflate footballs, yeah. So good for good for Jalen Brunson. Are Hell you yeah. excited for anything next week? I'm excited for, well, let's see, what's going on here? I'm excited for something. The Olympics are coming up, kind of, so that's kind of getting ready. I am ready for wild card races. I'm, uh, I'm ready for baseball to become important because that's right. pretty much all we got. Because <laughs> that's all, we, all got. we got, man. If we want to continue doing a show. I need baseball to get exciting. That's I right. personally am excited for the State of the Union or the State of the Country. <laughs> I'm really interested to see where this one goes. Yeah, I might have to read this book too, just like I read the 9/11 report. We might have to read the. Uh, we the might have to read the uh, the attempted assassination of Donald J. Um, uh, I, I'm interested to see where this goes. I really am because you know some of those protests with when he was president and the way these people just had n no uh, care for human beings' lives, and right. they just drive big trucks through shit and shoot at people, and the other people would just be as oh, yeah. nasty. Their answer is whatever that guy told me to say. And why? Well, I don't know. But that's the answer because he said so. And just people standing in, in all the things you're going to get to see. I'm truly glad that I stopped voting years ago and that on Tuesday every year in November. None of this is my fault. <laughs> none of this is his fault. It's not. It's just the criminals that run the country that made me realize that I should meditate that day and make sure I make it in the end. So I, in the end, it's got to be about you, and these people shouldn't be able to be a part of it, and they just just keep us separated, anyways. It is we should all be friends. I love everybody. I love you. I love my friend Nancy. I see you out there, Nancy. Nice. I love Vivian. I see. Can we you, love? Vivian. Can we love the YouTube community too? Can we love all of you in YouTube. Yeah, I mean that's the way it is. I'm just done with all this garbage. So, but I am excited for this next week of just like. I wonder where this one goes. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm yeah, FB. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Conspiracies galore. It should be interesting. should be interesting. I can't wait. I, I really can't. So, uh, and and, and uh, I'm going camping next to this week, too. So, so there'll be a lot of camping around. shorts. There will there'll be a lot of camping shorts. There'll be a lot of uh, 
Um, yeah. He's going to yell at me to do a Niners training camp video, so we might do something like that. Yeah, do a Niners training camp video when I get back from camping, which it's probably that Sunday. I don't know if I'll do a Packers training camp video because I just don't know if I'll have any – I'll be – I won't be ready. I'll have to okay. research. You, but uh, you might not you have know. the internet in the woods. <laughs> No, I think I have to record everything and then send it out when I get home anyways. So even all the camping shorts are still shorts that are like I record and then I wait till I get home and then I send them out one at a time in little increments of time. So, well, if everybody's alive next week, uh, I'm FB. I'm the goop. And we'll see you then, then. Peace. All right.